In this session, we'll create the corridor model that represents the connection here on the west side. I'm going to start by creating an assembly. Let me zoom in. I'll open the assembly menu and I'll choose create assembly. I'm going to call this curb returns for the assembly type. We'll leave that set to other. I'll click OK and then I'll click to place the assembly on screen. Next, I'll add some content to the assembly. I'll do that by selecting the assembly. I'll click to open the tool palette and then I'm going to add a type F curb and gutter. I'm going to right click on the palette name and I'll come down to F dot subassemblies. We'll go to the curb and gutter tab and I'll choose F dot type F curb. I'm going to place this on the right side. Let me open up the properties palette and we'll make sure that it's looking at the right. I will then click the insertion marker to place that and I'll press escape. Now we'll add a lane. I'm going to add a civil 3D lane. I'll do that by right clicking on the palette name and I'll choose Civil Imperial Subassemblies. And then on the Lanes tab, I'll choose Lane Super Elevation AOR. And then I'll click the insertion marker to place that lane on the left side. Now let's adjust some of the lane properties. I'm going to select the lane. We'll go to the Properties palette. I'll drag this down. We'll change the pavement thicknesses. Pave 1 depth is 0.125. Pave 2 depth is 0.125. Base depth is 0.5. And sub base depth is 0.333. I am not going to be using the potential pivots, so I'll turn those off. Let me drag this to the top and we'll give this lane a logical name. I'll call this return lane and then I'll press escape to deselect. Let me zoom out just a little bit. What I'm going to do is take this assembly and sweep it clockwise along this alignment and profile. This will create the curb and gutter to the outside and it will create the lane to the inside. The width and the slope of this lane in the assembly doesn't matter because the width and elevation is going to be driven by targets. As the assembly is swept along, the lane is going to follow the edge of traveled way here until it gets down to the second street alignment and then it's going to follow that alignment and profile geometry until it gets back to here. Let me zoom out. I just want to mention that I drew all of these alignments in a clockwise direction, so I'll be able to use this assembly for every quadrant. Let's zoom in, and we'll start by creating the corridor here in the northwest quadrant. I'm going to create a new corridor for this. I'll call the corridor Secondary Street West Blend. For the alignment, I'll choose Northwest Return. We'll use the Northwest Return Finished Grade Profile. I'm going to use the Curb Returns Assembly. No targets. I would like to set baseline and region parameters. Let me click OK. So for the region I'm creating, I am going to choose a start station. I'm doing that because this alignment runs the full length and I don't want to sweep the assembly that far. I want it to start here at the end point of the return. Then we'll click the end station and we'll set that to the end point here at the other side. Let's come down to frequency and we'll tighten this up. We'll set the curve increment to three feet for right now and then I'll come down and click OK. OK, we'll rebuild and we'll take a look. Right here we can see this is sweeping nicely around the bend creating my curb and gutter. All I have to do at this point is assign the targeting for this lane. Let's do that. I'll select the corridor and then I'm going to use the Edit Targets shortcut button. I'll click in this region and then for the return lane its horizontal properties will be defined by the secondary street alignment and I would like it to follow some geometry in the drawing. I'll choose Select from Drawing it's going to follow the edge of traveled way here on the left. So follow both of those targets, whichever one is nearest. Let's click OK. That gets the lane where I want it horizontally. Let's take care of the vertical targets now. Once again, we'll select an object from the drawing. We'll grab the feature line at the edge of traveled way left. And I would also like this to follow a profile. I'd like it to follow the profile associated with Secondary Street, the Secondary Street finished grade. I'll click Add, target both of these profiles, whichever one is nearest. I'll click OK, OK, I'll press Escape and we'll back up. That looks really good. Let me zoom in. If we get really close we can see that it would be nice if I had another assembly insertion right here. Unfortunately I don't have an object snap there but I can get one pretty close. I'm going to select the corridor and then I'll click the Edit Corridor Frequencies button. I'll click inside the region and then we'll just add an insertion close to this corner. There we go. I'll press Enter and then I'll click OK. Let's zoom out. I'll do a quick regen. This looks good. Next we'll create the corridor for the southwest return. I'm just going to add this baseline to the corridor we just made. I'll select the corridor and go to Corridor Properties. Here on the Parameters tab I can see my current baseline and region. I'm going to add a baseline. We will add the southwest return. I'll click OK. 
Remember that a baseline is defined horizontally and vertically, so let's assign a profile. We'll choose the Southwest Return Finished Grade Profile. I'll click OK. Now we'll add a region. I'll right click on the baseline and choose Add Region. It's going to use the Curb Returns Assembly. Let's expand this. I will then choose the Start and End Station. Since this is traveling clockwise, my Start Station will be here at the end points. And then the end station will be here at the southernmost end point. Let's adjust the frequency. I'll set this to three feet for the curb increment. I'll click OK. I will then go to the target column. Let's assign the horizontal properties of the lane. First, it's going to target an object in the drawing. This lane will target the edge of traveled way left. It is also going to target an alignment. That will be the secondary street center line alignment, whichever one's nearest. Now we'll take care of the elevation. I would like to target the profile associated with secondary street. It's the secondary street finished grade profile. I would also like to target an entity in the drawing. I will select that entity and we'll choose the edge of traveled way here on the left. So as this sweeps around the corner, it's going to target horizontally and vertically this edge and this one. Let's press enter. I'll click OK and OK. OK, we'll rebuild. Let's zoom in and take a look. This is really good, with the exception we've just got to add one more frequency insertion. Let me select the corridor. I'll choose Edit Corridor Frequencies. I'll click inside the new region, and we will add an insertion at the end point of this other custom insertion we just made. I'll click OK when finished. Let's back up and take a look. Finally, I'm going to select this corridor and we'll view it in the Object Viewer. When I'm done reviewing the corridor model, I will click the X to close the Object Viewer. In our next session, we'll build out the corridor model here that represents the connection on the east side of Primary Street.